Welcome to the Bentley Systems Training Course, where you will learn how to design steel connections using RAM Connection Standalone. RAM Connection Standalone is used for the design and detailing of steel connections, and it can design individual shear, moment, brace, splice, and truss connection types to a variety of different steel design codes. In this particular video, we're going to be focusing on the workflow for designing end plate shear connections to beam to column joints and also beam to girder joints. We will now turn our attention to our RAM connection standalone application where we're going to demonstrate the workflow for designing end plate shear connections to a couple of the joints within this model. I'm going to go ahead and start with joint number one which is a basic beam column flange joint with a shear reaction imposed upon it. Now end plates can be assigned directly through the templates area and through the database or through a basic or smart connection workflow. To access the basic and smart connection workflows, you're going to go to the design tab in your ribbon toolbar and select either the basic or smart connection option. I'm going to select the basic connection option for this workflow and then ideally I'm looking for the acronym EP for end plate. You can see for an end plate, I have two distinct options. I could have it either bolted to the support section or welded to the support section. I'm going to go with the bolted option for this joint, and then we'll click close once the connection has been assigned. If I were to look at the nomenclature used for this, I could see that this was an end plate for a beam column flange joint. It's using a quarter inch plate with four three quarter inch diameter bolts. If I wanted some additional information or if I wanted to customize this particular connection, I can go to the design tab in the ribbon toolbar and click on the edit icon. This is a shear connection, so the shear connection option is available to me. Now in the data panel, again, there's certain pieces of information that comes from either the model configuration or the joint data. They have these blue arrows adjacent to them, and these are the types of pieces of information or parameters that should be edited elsewhere within the program. If I were to look at the connector area though, I would see that these are pieces of information that I can customize. And they include the plate thickness and material. It includes the welding information for the beam side and then the connector information for the bolt side. When I assigned this particular template, I said I wanted to go with a bolted, but if I change my mind once I get here, I can also switch it to welded connection if I would prefer. Now from the connection pad, I can also review the DXF information. I can customize the font size and the layers for this DXF and also export it to a DXF for my detailing purposes later. Lastly, while in the connection pad, I can also look at the steel connection report where I'd be able to review all of the geometric considerations and the design checks that were performed along with the status of each check. If I would like some additional information, I can go up to the ribbon, click on the view formulas icon, and I'd be able to see the formulas, variables, and code sections that influenced basically these results. Now, if I'm done reviewing the connection report, I can click on the close icon. And since I didn't make any changes, I'm just going to go ahead and exit out of the connection pad. And I'm going to say no, I don't need to save, save any of the changes. Now, in addition to being able to be assigned to a beam column joint, we can also assign this connection template to a beam girder joint. So let me go ahead and select joint number five. For this video, we're also going to assign a shear end plate connection type to joint number five, which is a typical beam girder joint with a shear reaction imposed upon it. To assign the connection template, let's go to the design tab in the ribbon toolbar, click on the assign option, and this time let's select a smart connection design workflow. And if I find the acronym EP for end plate, I can see that again, I have a bolted or a welded option. This would be the connection to the support section, which for a beam girder joint would be your girder. I'm gonna go with a smart end plate bolted connection, and then we're gonna click close. 
Now again, to arrive at the connection pad, I can click on the edit icon and then edit my shear connection. For a beam girder joint, let's go over a couple of the parameters that you can customize per your detailing standard. The first thing we're gonna see is that we can adjust the beam girder alignment. The default will be put the top and top of the beam and top of the girder at the same elevation, but you can also enter it as centered or a particular variable distance. I'm gonna change mine to centered and I'm gonna adjust my coping to try to avoid coping of this connection, see if everything fits for me. In addition to that, I can scroll on down and you can see the end plate connector information can be modified. You can adjust your plate thickness and material. You can adjust your welding for your beam. So that would be the end plate to the beam connection. And then you, on your support side, you can adjust the connection to your girder. Here I selected bolted, but you also have the option in the connection pad to change to a welded connection type. Now at this point, I'm gonna save the changes that I made. I'm gonna keep the beam girder alignment at the center position and then I'm gonna exit out of the connection pad. Now at this point, this concludes the workflow for assigning a shear end plate to both a beam column and a beam girder joint. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you and see you next time.